Government always abides by the rule of law. The rule of law. The rule of law. This government will always respect the rule of law. The Secretary of State has said that he is committed, and the government are committed to the rule of law. Does he recognise that the adherence to the rule of law uh, is not negotiable? Um, I would say to my um, honourable friend that yes, this does break international law in a very specific and limited way. We are taking the power to disapply the EU law concept of direct effect required by Article 4 in a certain very tightly defined circumstances. Recently, the media have been complaining that the British government intends to break international law as part of Brexit. In practice, these complaints highlight the media's historic silence when the British government has routinely broken international law before, in particular, our involvement in foreign conflicts enforcing US and Western interests. Another opportunity to explore how the British government facilitates international law breaking was the killing of Harry Dunn outside USAF Crowton. Why do American personnel at this site have diplomatic immunity? The detailed answer to that question raises many uncomfortable facts, such as the fact that far worse acts than dangerous driving regularly take place at US foreign bases in Japan or South Korea, or the fact that USAF Crowton has for many years been routinely involved in the killing of civilians on a daily basis. Why do the civilian staff of this base have diplomatic immunity? Why has the British government exempted this site from international humanitarian law to facilitate its abuse of civilians in far from places around the world? This is not an RAF base, and we should not use that designation. The British government and the RAF officially have no knowledge of what goes on here, especially in relation to this site's involvement in drone warfare and Arctic killing. The day-to-day -day work of USAF Crowton is to support the abuse of human rights as part of US foreign policy. The American government sets the rules here. They run and police the site. And American exceptionalism over international humanitarian law has official leave to operate within its perimeter fence. USAF Crowton's role is to act as a communications hub for military and intelligence sites across Britain and Europe. It is a global link in the command and control chain of the American military's network-centric warfare system. By connecting all military sites and hardware to a single network, many different operations can be managed by military and intelligence staff anywhere across the world. As the sharp end of military operations now routinely involves the use of armed drones, network-centric warfare is designed to allow a few people to run a global, covert, low-intensity, lethal military campaign using few personnel or resources. Once the communications hardware is in place, it can be used to carry out unlawful acts at any time, with little control or oversight by the nation hosting that installation. The German government recently sought to restrict the use of American bases for drone warfare, as required by international law. Our government will not even acknowledge that such operations are supported from here. From the outside, what is most easily seen are the ray domes, the large grey balls housing satellite dishes. Though highly visible, they are not the largest part of the site's communications capacity. Crowton is part of a global system of fibre optic cables that spans the globe, shifting data, telemetry and voice communications from the continental USA to Europe, and then on to the Middle East and North Africa. From the hill opposite the base, you get a view down onto the site. Near the centre is a large tower. This connects to the nearby USAF Barford St John, which operates shortwave radio equipment and possibly connects to yet more national data trunks. At the foot of the tower is a group of low buildings. These form the communications centre, managing the flow of data in and out of the site and hosting the racks of computer servers required to run that. More significant though is the large windowless building to the east, protected within its high security enclosure. This is the operations centre where US military and intelligence staff run the operations of the site and help support foreign missions. That could be anything from running CIA surveillance on Chancellor Merkel's mobile phone, to JSOC launching drone strikes in North Africa, to US Cyber Command hacking computer networks. 
One of the more significant cables that runs from Crowton links directly to the US military's Camp Le Monnier Air in Djibouti. This is a site from which US forces launched drone strikes in Yemen and across North Africa, and which coordinates the many small lily pad bases across the Sahara region that undertake counter-terrorism operations. The chorus of opposition to U.S. drone attacks is getting louder and louder in Yemen. The Yemeni parliament has banned drone attacks in a symbolic vote. Anger has been on the rise at the U.S. drone attacks in Yemen. The country has seen several protests against deadly raids by the un unmanned aerial vehicles. Washington has stepped up its drone operations in Yemen in recent months. The attacks have killed many people. The U.S. says it's targeting Al-Qaeda-linked militants, but many Yemenis call this a violation of their sovereignty. The American drone strikes have killed large numbers of people in other Muslim countries, including Pakistan. The United Nations has condemned the U.S. for using its drones for what the world body calls targeted killings. To date, the operations run from Camp Le Monnier and its Lipaz sites have routinely broken international humanitarian law and the laws of war. Camp Le Monnier also has a significant involvement supporting Saudi-led forces bombing Yemen, just across the Red Sea from Djibouti, in the process creating one of the world's worst humanitarian crises today. The war that began in 2015 has killed tens of thousands of people and created the world's most urgent humanitarian emergency. But there's another war being waged in Yemen, overshadowed by the strife in the country. The US has been conducting drone strikes in Yemen for the last 16 years. There were 127 strikes in 2017 alone. The so-called signature strikes have aimed to suppress members of Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. But the campaign has killed scores of civilians targeting houses, schools, hospitals, markets, and even wedding processions. In an examination of drone strikes this year, the AP and Bureau of Investigative Journalism found that at least 30 of those killed were not Al-Qaeda members. That's around a third of people killed in drone strikes so far this year. The US started its drone warfare in Yemen in 2002 and it has drawn widespread criticism for hitting targets and regions without a proven source associating them with militants. As many as 1,700 people have been killed and thousands have been wounded since the first reported strike. But the drone deaths have fallen off the radar since the US-backed Saudi-led military coalition started its bombing raids against the Iran-backed Houthi rebels. There are no reports of the precise number of civilian deaths due to the difficulty in confirming the identities of those killed. And the US government does not provide adequate explanations detailing their strikes. This has led to the international community raising concerns about the lack of enforcement of humanitarian laws that call for the safety of civilians. As the site is instrumental in supporting those operations, the staff at USAF Crowton are complicit in those acts too. This is British territory. It is not part of the American sovereign state. British law technically applies to all operations here, but by exempting USAF Crowton from those laws, our own government, and by extension, all of us, are complicit in those actions too. The problem of exceptionalism and the political expediency of breaking international law to suit national ambition is that it can become infectious. Under Donald Trump, it has become official US foreign policy. With Brexit, that same approach is now seemingly applicable here too. As part of a less publicised Overseas Operations Bill, Britain is proposing to exempt our armed forces from the UN Convention Against Torture and the European Convention on Human Rights. Thing is, once we roll back historic protections on killing or torture, what international standards are not open to willing abuse? Not just abroad, but at home too. USA of Crowton is symbolic of the West's exceptionalism in the application of international law. More directly, it is symbolic of the West's willingness to accept killing, maiming and mass suffering of civilians in order to guarantee their own national advantage in global affairs.
As our government engages in ever more flagrant breaches of international rules, we have a duty to oppose and, if possible, halt these operations. Crowton Watch exists to support those willing to assist in countering the activities of USAF Crowton. For more information on the site and its activities, see our website.